So um, I guess number one is you've got to make sure you're all over the calculator. Um, although there won't be a huge number of calculation questions, I mean, most level one exams will be between sort of you know, 25% to maybe 30, 30 odd percent, maybe a quarter to a third, let's say, of the calculations uh, typically involve you using your calculator. Um, but that said, you know, if you need to use a calculator, then clearly you need to use a calculator. So it's important that you know all the relevant functions. Uh, and you can do them quickly. So these last few weeks, just identify those, those key functions. Uh, we have a list of them here. Uh, so we have the time value of money, that third row from the top. Crucially here, please make sure you remember how to clear the memory. Otherwise, uh, if you don't use a particular value in the next question, then the last value you put in will still be there. So remember, this third row we're talking about from the top, this third row, then we're using the, uh, the clear time value of money command, which is above the uh, FV on the far uh, right hand side. Obviously it's a yellow command, so we access that by hitting the yellow second button. So basically second and FV will clear the memory. But uh, that's, I guess, the basic one. I convert, really, really cool uh, function. That's where you can switch between a stated or nominal rate and effective rate. I'll do a little, um, uh, recap uh, in one of the examples in a moment. Data and stat, again, pretty crucial for working out things like standard deviation, uh, for example, um, uh, potentially correlation, uh, but it's mostly standard deviation. Uh, make sure you can distinguish between population, which is using Greek letters, so sigma, and sample standard deviation, which is Roman letters, so an S. Uh, but again, data and stat can save you uh, heaps of time. Yeah. The net present value on IRR, well, IRR you can't really do other than through a financial calculator, or unless you have Excel smuggled into the exam. Um, so you have to know how to use the cash flow function. And again, like we mentioned with time value money, make sure you know how to delete what's in there first. So remember, you hit the cash flow button, the CF button, then once you've, you're into that worksheet, to clear that worksheet, you have to press second and then clear work. And the clear work button is this bottom left button here. So second, bottom left, but you have to press that once you're in the worksheet. So cash flow, then press that. So again, you know, these questions will come up all over the paper. It could be corporate finance, it could be in the quant section, uh, maybe in the context of a bond, because obviously the IRR is equivalent to a yield. So there's lots of ways you may be uh, asked to do that. The AMORT function, I mean, classic financial reporting type question where you have to account for a bond or lease liability. And as you probably know, you do that through an amortization approach. So again, please make sure you remember how to use the AMOT function. Um, now, if you forget any of these uh, functions, uh, there is a, a, a free uh, video uh, which you can click on, link is shown below if you need it. But basically have a little checklist uh, of these um, cash flow uh, type uh, functions. Now, there are loads more functions in the calculator, but they're not really needed for CFA. So these are the main ones we have here. So I guess that's the, the first the first tip, is knowing those, um, those functions, okay?